<laughs> all right, Jeffy, take two. Jeffy wasn't recording, last time, so I got to remember all that. Yeah, as soon as we grabbed the takes today, it started raining like massively. Ulan. Normally, you know Ulan? Yeah, what is that? Planet, planet or what? Ulan is rain. 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 Okay, well, <laughs> no now we got in it. Ulan. <laughs> I learned more. I learned the good words from him, and I learned the bad words from my wife. Ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're out here at Luca Sanctuary. Uh, as soon as we got here, it's like pouring rain, so Jeffy's holding the camera for us on our fans little awning thing. And yeah, we're gonna go diving here at the sanctuary. I haven't been here really in the day. It's usually a night dive. Yeah. Lots of grass and turtles. Uh, at night, I used to see a lot of bobtail squid, but over there. We'll get to it. It's like a sanctuary, all the big reef and fish and stuff. So, but today I get to try out my new toy from Orca Torch. I want to be just like Finn. <laughs> so I got to explain this again because Jeffy wasn't recording last time. <laughs> so this is my other lights are also Orca Torch, but they're five thousand lumens each, like a hundred and twenty degree wide angle lights up everything, and it's been great. But this is a narrow beam 2000 lumen torch with a snoot on it. So the little light will come out. And if you guys have been watching Finn's channel or his photos on Instagram or fa uh, Facebook, like he can, li I'm talking about two millimeter little critters. He can light them up like a, like a ballerina on a stage where it's all black except for one spotlight on the ballerina. That's what I want to do. I love his, that's how he does it with a completely back black, black ground, background. Uh, so I had Orca Torch send me another one, so shout out to them. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to find critters that are about this big or smaller. And uh, regardless, you should also try underwater to take it up. Take this off? So if you, if you find, a, oh, big find critter, a bigger one, still try to, because the beam, I think, by looking at this unit, is straight down. It's not wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can work both ways. It's definitely like. But if we find a small one, tiny, definitely have uh, this new on. But to be honest, I've seen some of your photos or videos where it's bigger than your beam and you're just lighting up its face or its tail or something, not its whole body. Still yeah. looks really awesome. Yeah, so. Definitely. I'm just going to go play with this. I hope I have some good footage for you guys. Of course, I'll get their names and addresses and, you know, their family uh, history. But <laughs> so we'll try to make it look cool while I sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we better get in the water before we drown. <laughs> that, that made no sense. Hmm? Critter Hunter. Hello, Steve. Turn off the lights, stupid. I had the light shift. Okay, sorry. Moving on, I think we'll start this dive with Jethro. Now, Jethro is a giant moray, although he's not too giant yet. He's actually a medium giant moray, if that makes any sense. Now, Jethro likes to make homes and little small crevices and caves that he steals from lesser fish. Now, when I mean lesser, I mean just smaller, not like less IQ or, you know, inferior of any kind. Just so you know. His neighbor's name is Bong Bong the Hawkfish. So, let's interview Bong Bong. Hello, Bong Bong. How are you doing? Who am I? What was the question? Yeah, it's going to be a long day. Moving on. So, here's a hermit crab named Henry, and I told you guys in a different episode that I don't speak crab or shrimp, but Henry the hermit crab actually speaks multiple languages, so he was able to translate for me. And his story goes like this. Back in the day, about, well, four days ago, Henry found a lover, but unfortunately, that lover turned out to be a gold digger and ended up stealing his house. So now... Henry spends his day in an old, dilapidated little shell, looking for a nicer house that he'll one day call his own. Now, clubfish, on the other hand, although they're spawns of Satan and love to bite innocent divers named Critter Hunter on the head when he's filming them, well, they like to live out in the open and see enemies like this, and they think other predators and stuff won't go into the sea enemy and it protects them. 
But sometimes when that's not enough, they'll leave the anemone and bite a diver right in the forehead or the arm when he's trying to film them. They're rather quite rude and I don't appreciate it. That's why I say they're spawns of Satan. Not the cute little Finding Nemo you see on TV. Now there's lots of species of anemone fish, but I'm gonna get to that in a whole separate episode. So, let's meet some of the neighbors instead. Madison is a Napoleon snake eel, and similar to the guy that I woke up earlier that had the night shift, well, this snake eel likes to just dig down in the dirt and just poke his head out waiting for stuff to swim by. They're more active at night, trying to bite innocent little critters that go by, but luckily for me, they don't really bother me much, and they're really pretty to film. I also ran into Jesse, the moray eel, on this dive, and it's another kind of eel. There's quite a bit of eels on this dive. In fact, I'd like to call this dive site. So if you're looking to make friends of an eel, this is the place to go. So once again, I don't speak crab, and my other hermit crab buddy wasn't around to translate for me. But this guy looks pretty awesome. I'm not sure what country he comes from or what brand guy I should say because he really only travels like three feet. But he's a really cool little crab that just likes to chill under the rock ledge and watch me go by. Doesn't seem like he's bothered at all by my big lights and cameras, so I take advantage and try to get a close-up. Cute little booger. So I'm just trying to play with this new snoot light from Orca Torch, and I couldn't really find any tiny critters to film. So I shined it on this little hard coral, and lo and behold, there's some kind of fireworm or something. I didn't even see it before, but now that I look at the footage, looks like it's just chilling right there. So as you can see, I'm really playing with the light, trying to get the hang of getting the light in the right position. Because with my huge lights, it just lit up everything in the area. I didn't have to like point it right at the exact spot. But as you can see, I'm trying to mess with it, and then once I get it there, it's overexposed and everything. I have to stop the camera and reset the settings. Well, when the camera and the light are in the same position. And this is what it looks like. My light is kind of dancing around though, and I figured out that it's just me. It's not the light or the flicker or anything. It's just the very, very subtle movements in my camera when I'm floating there. Uh, they can be seen with the light. So I'm going to master that in upcoming dives. But for now, at least I figured out good settings so that I can really light up the subject and darken the background. I'm starting to love it already. You know who else loved the spotlight? Jezebel the Looney Break. So this is actually really hard when the subject is moving. Uh, I mean, this is my first time using a slew, and like I said, this is a little tiny Looney Break, and the light, the spot of light, is only about the size of a US dime. So while I'm looking at the camera, I gotta keep moving the light just to have whatever I want to film spotlighted. And then by then, the settings are all wrong, so I have to turn it off and set the settings and then start again. But, I'm getting there. You can see some lit up butt feathers right there, so it's cool. Yeah, with a bigger subject like this that's moving away from me, it's really hard to keep focus, keep the camera steady, to keep it centered, and also keep that little spot of light on the part that I want filmed, like the face or whatever. And with the light going on and off, it just keeps on focusing. So it's gonna take some practice. I think I'm getting the hang of it, and by the end of this dive, it should start looking pretty good. This big old blue spotted stingray needed no spotlight. It wouldn't even have mattered. Uh, it would have lit up one little spot, maybe. But I put it on wide angle focus and just kind of snuck up on him, see how close I could get. And yeah, it wasn't very far. This is Samuel the Stingray, and he's got no time for camera people. 
so here's what my new torch looks like without the slew on the end and I like it it's a really soft color but it's not a huge beam and it's a little bit lighter than my other big torches so nothing's blown out and this is what it looks like with everything lit which still looks good but after some practice here's what it looks like with the sloop yeah finally it looks great if I could get entire episodes to look like this where just a little critter and maybe a little bit of stuff around him is lit up and it looks like a night dive it, I think this would be an awesome accomplishment I, I just could compare it to like a ballerina or a comedian on stage where it's completely dark except for one spotlight that's lighting up the ballerina. That's what this reminds me of and I think it's a really classy look. What do you guys think? Anyways, thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.